Well, you're right. This hardly looks like a highway work zone. But let me tell you, it's going to be, and somebody has to start the job. Field engineers and surveyors begin the process of road building way before anybody even knows where the work zone will be. And right from the beginning, they have to be concerned about safety. If it's not the nasty little critters like mosquitoes and chiggers, sometimes there's bigger critters like snakes and skunks that would just as soon you didn't disturb their private little corner of the world. Just finding an existing reference marker can spoil your whole day. And probably the most dangerous critter out there is you. During the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about surveying. Not how to survey, but how to survey safely. Like most safety concerns, both in and out of the work zone, surveying safety is a matter of attitude. Your attitude and the way your fellow crew members think about safety. You got to look out for one another. When your eyeballs are locked onto that instrument, they sure can't see the traffic. The surveyor's work zone can be just about anywhere. And while there will be beautiful summer days like this one, where it all seems like a stroll in the country, more often than not, you'll be out in the hot sun or slogging through the snow and slush, or stomping in the mud. And on many of the locations, you'll need to be looking out for the traffic that's fast and up close, or the really big and nasty ones, the high up and treacherous, and the down deep and dangerous. But again, Whenever you go out to survey, don't get caught just thinking about the numbers or daydreaming because sometimes the work can be repetitious. You've got to stay focused. Let's start with the basics, your gear, your personal protection gear. It goes without saying, when you're in and around the traffic, it's time for the high-vis vests. Always. Don't forget them. And don't neglect your traffic control. There are times when surveyors have to go in harm's way right out there on the center line where your most important personal protection is your thinking cap. Surveyors spend most of their time outdoors you got to keep track of the weather and dress for the environment. In summertime, that means loose clothing. Nothing wrong with short pants on a hot day, but sometimes the weeds and brush or that barbed wire fence may change your mind. Hats and eye protection are good ideas, although it can be tough to focus your instrument through sunglasses and under the bill of your cap. Sturdy boots or shoes are a must. This is no place for your Nikes. And don't neglect the fluids. And of course, surveying frequently has to continue in winter. The secret to winter wear is layers. The temperature can drop, the wind come up, and your environment can change rapidly. Although the wind is blowing pretty good on this job, it's not too cold. These guys are just wearing their ball caps. But notice, 
They've got those hooded sweatshirts just in case things change. And check out these. Hunter's Mittens. Helps prevent frostbite finger. The real danger out here is hypothermia, where your body's core temperature goes down. It can sneak up on you and you can become a little punchy and disoriented. Not a good situation when you need to stay sharp. Keep your eye on your buddies. Out here, teamwork is important. Heavy duty coveralls, leggings, and of course, warm and waterproof footgear is very important. Once your feet are cold, you're gonna find it hard to concentrate on your work. Talk it over. Take a break for some hot coffee and a little warm up in the truck. Earlier, we met this guy swinging the brush hook. A very effective tool when handled properly, but also a potential hazard to yourself and those around you. So let's take a look at some of the hand tools surveyors work with. This trusty little hatchet, for example. It can put a point on your stake and drive it as well. Two for the price of one. Probably gets used as a hammer more often than a chopper, but don't treat it casually. That blade is sharp, and you gotta think about where you're swinging it. Talk about driving stakes. Surveyors get to drive lots of stakes. And sometimes a pretty heavy duty sledge is required. Running a long series of markers can get pretty repetitious, but you got to keep in mind the potential hazard that sledge represents. Not only because your partner is close by, but think about the care and maintenance of your hand tools. A loose handle on this baby is an accident waiting to happen. This heavy-duty post pounder is the answer for putting in those re-rod markers or driving posts. This is a two-person operation, and teamwork and good communication are most important. Surveyors use all kinds of hand tools. Everything from pickaxes and machetes to chainsaws. They all can be important to getting the job done, and they all can be hazardous to your health. So treat them with the respect they demand. We said that the surveyor's work zone could be most anywhere. Well, let's visit some of those locations with an eye out for the kinds of hazards they present. We watched these two go up this embankment earlier. Footing on these slopes can be pretty nasty, especially when the grass is wet. Sometimes the marker you need is just across the barbed wire. Fence climbing is always tricky. Notice how he sets the pole by the marker, but they go to the next post for the climbing. And he's not just being a proper gentleman here. He's practicing good teamwork and giving his partner a steadying hand. Moving dirt along the hall road. And that means the surveyors need to be there, checking locations and elevations. Whenever you're out in this situation, you gotta do what your mama told you. That's right. Look both ways before you cross the road. Visibility can be a real problem out here. Dust gets in your eyes and also clouds you from seeing those big and nasty scrapers. Your bright vest helps, but the rule of these haul roads is to stay out of their way. The drivers are up high, bouncing along, mostly concerned about where the next rig is. They can't see you down there. The noise can make it difficult to concentrate. The wind is blowing, and they're coming at you from both directions. If you don't much enjoy the haul road, the borrow pit can be even worse. Because here, 
There's no defined roadway. It just keeps changing. And to add to the comings and goings of these big scrapers, you'll often see other gear, like this big dozer. It can be muddy, noisy, and confusing. So again, you got to keep looking. Some pits will be working big dumpers. They follow a little better defined route than the scrapers, but they're just as big. The driver's way up there above you, and he's frequently going a whole lot faster. You know you got to be out there to do your job, but keep your head screwed on and stay out of traffic. Obviously, there was some heavy equipment on this pipeline site, although they're not working today. Looks like it's been a little wet. The hazards of working around these deep cut ditches are legend in the utilities business. Cave-ins and mudslides are your nightmares here. Once the basic route has been marked out, survey party's not going to be back through here much. But even when this operation is done and finished, it's good to think about why those signs are posted. In the urban and suburban environment, surveyors frequently need to mark out a job that requires crossing the existing underground utilities. You need to be sure the area you're working is fully tagged and flagged for what's under there. You sure don't want to be driving markers down into somebody's communication cables, or worse yet, a power cable or gas line. Construction sites can be a real challenge, like locating piers and checking bridge decks. The bridge crew gets used to working out here, but you need to review your situation carefully and just take it slow. Frequently, that deck is loaded with stuff to trip you up, especially when you're moving without looking first. Seems like a pretty nice day out here today, but remember, the wind can get to whipping around when you're up high like this, and no day is a good day for a fall. Day in and day out. The most dangerous place to be doing surveying is out here on the center line. Let me remind you again how important your personal protection is out here and how you need to rely on each other. Talk to each other. Watch out for each other. And don't forget, the job isn't done when you take the last reading. The job is done when you get back off the center line. So have a good day, but more important, have a safe one. The instructional designers for this series insist that all demonstrations show positive examples. But just this once, we thought it might be valuable to see some really stupid mistakes. So let's go out with good old boys from close and enough surveying. This is Marty Nuff, junior partner in the firm. He's a former rock musician who believes in on-the-job surveyor training. And believe me, he needs it. He's real proud of his new tool time belt. Says, there's nothing like a belt from the belt. And here's the principal of the firm, Lindy Close. Got his surveyor training in the Corps of Engineers and still likes to wear his military gear in the field. Doesn't hold with these newfangled digital instruments. Says his good old reliable meets the company's motto, close enough for government work. On cool fall days, Marty likes to leave the Jeep running, a little warmer when you get back from the field but a hot muffler in the dry grass is not a good situation. The secret to safe surveying is looking after one another and planning ahead.
an extra tall range pole and overhead power lines? No thanks. Meanwhile, back at the Jeep. You smell smoke? Earlier, we mentioned that it's advisable to be a little cautious when proceeding into terrain that may belong to the natives. And any damn fool knows how to cross a fence, right? Finally, across the fence, our dynamic duo heads off across the field. Good luck and stay safe. <laughs>